We may be living on the cutting edge of science, but a manned flight to Mars may be even riskier than previously thought. A NASA-funded study finds exposure to radiation during a journey from Earth to Mars could cause subtle brain damage in astronauts. WSJ senior science correspondent Lee Holtz joins us now. Lee, thanks so much for being with us. Tell us about this study. What did it look at, and how did it come to this conclusion? Well, space travel is inherently a risky business, but NASA and other space agencies that want to put uh, people on other planets now have got something new to worry about. Long, uh, prolonged exposure to the very low levels of radiation, of cosmic rays. These are charged particles spewing from newborn black holes from exploding stars far, far away. Um, that floods um, the inkiness of space in the uh, gaps between the planets. And over the long periods that uh, such a journey would require, um, to Mars, say a year, maybe three years, uh, it could dumb you down. And the distance between Earth and Mars is what, about 140 million uh, miles? A close approach, yes. It can get as far away as 300 million miles. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that means a journey, say, of a year or more, and uh, slowly, gradually, over that period of time, uh, researchers at the University of California at Irvine and the University of Nevada, working with NASA funding, um, tested mice and radiation beams at Brookhaven National Laboratory um, out on Long Island. And what they found was that uh, after they exposed these mice to the kinds of charged particles you might encounter in deep space. Now, we're not talking about where the uh, space station is or where the space shuttle pilots used to fly. That could have uh, serious effects on your brain cells in your hippocampus and your prefrontal cortex. These are all areas uh, associated with memory, with um, decision making, and literally the particles appear to sort of break off pieces of the synapses and it has the consequences on behavior. You get slow, you get easily confused, you have trouble remembering. I mean, we send some of our smartest people into the astronaut corps and into right. space, and this is gonna shave points, they say, perhaps off their IQs. This could be dangerous in a spaceflight emergency. So this is, th this is the result shown in the mice. They lost... Uh, in laboratory right. animals, laboratory in mice. Animals. And this is the, about the first time they've ever seen this. Now, mm -hmm. NASA's been studying sort of the health hazards of radiation for decades, but they've tended to focus on things like what's the elevated risk of cancer. So how much radiation has the typical astronaut been exposed to then in the past? Well, this kind of radiation... I don't think in the 54 years of human spaceflight any astronaut has ever gotten a full dose. I mean, the, the sheer bulk of the planet Earth, its atmosphere, its magnetic field, these all protect us and people in uh, near-Earth orbit from these kinds of deep space cosmic rays. Um, the people who've gone furthest away from Earth, um, the Apollo astronauts, they got the highest doses, and, and they reported that when they closed their eyes, uh, they would see flashes of light, which were these cosmic gamma rays actually uh, shooting through their retinas and like through their brains. So is this likely to put off any manned trips to Mars? I mean, obviously, it seems like NASA would want to do something about this first, create special space suits. Is that possible? Well, shielding can certainly make a difference. And first of all, I think it's important to say in the outset, this is a new risk, not the only one, maybe not the most severe, but they've never had to think about it before. Uh, aluminum, which is the typical space flight shielding, does provide some protection. It may be that uh, they start building these kinds of spacecraft out of plastic, which actually gives very good protection against these kinds of particles. But then you could never leave the spacecraft, correct? That would be the problem. <laughs> All right, Lee, thank you so much. I hope it doesn't take too long. It would be very exciting to send men to Mars. I'd go. <laughs> All right, good. We have a volunteer right here.